Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis with a presentation on spaceflight controls, rotations, translations, and physics in Unity 3D. This video starts off a new part of a series where I have been building up a prototype space combat system. And in the last series, we had covered some options for shooting lasers and detecting collisions with lasers and how to respond to those collisions. And this video kicks off a series where we are going to implement space flight for our ships and uh, the player controller as well. So the first consideration when you're using any kind of player controller system in Unity, regardless of whether it's motion in space or driving or anything, is using scripted control versus physics. This is stuff that's pretty basic. If you want to have a lot of interaction with your with your ship or the player and, and other objects in the game, you probably do want to have some level of physics, but there's a lot of decisions in that. If you want to have scripted control and physics, you want to probably use a character controller. If you just want to use physics, then you can probably use a rigid body. And if you're using a rigid body, be sure you use the physics system and use fixed update and things like that. We talked about this in the laser video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail over that. Uh, but there is there is more considerations for player control, and we'll get to that when we actually start building these systems out. But more importantly, with space flight, um, there are a lot of different ways you can have your spacecraft fly. And so we're going to talk about those options now. And the first option for controlling a spaceship in space is to use simulation space physics. Now, simulation space physics is something that, generally speaking, you have a force, your ship moves in a direction, and when it changes direction, its new direction is the wherever the force is pushing it and a combination of where it was previously moving because of its momentum. Um, and so... To give you an idea, with simulation space physics, it's quite possible to have a ship. In this case, you can see my ship is pointing towards the bottom right of the screen. And it could be flying through space like this. Um, at some point, it had a force applied to it, and it's going in a straight line. It's not slowing down. Um, whatever pushed it that way, um, it's just going to keep going that way until another force either stops it, um, things like that. Uh, it's a combination of forces. The second approach to controls might be a pseudo-sim aircraft physics. And all that means is we're trying to simulate aircraft physics, but we're in space. And one key factor of that is like if it's a simulation, your plane has roll and pitch. Uh, so when you want to turn left, you roll left usually by turning your joystick left, and then you pull down or push up on the joystick to push or pull the pull back and your your you know your ship or aircraft is going to kind of do a backflip sideways to some extent to turn and then it works like that so generally speaking the biggest difference um, or the biggest consideration here is that with an aircraft physics of any kind you are making the ship move in the direction it's facing and restricting motion to just that direction generally not in every single case there are other considerations with that but generally speaking space sim where you're facing is not necessarily where you're moving but a spacecraft generally speaking where you're facing is where you're moving the another option you might have is to use arcade type aircraft physics uh, the biggest change to that might be simply in how the ship moves left and right and the last example you would roll and then pull back. In this example, if you want to turn left, you simply move your joystick left, and then the game will automatically rotate or roll the roll the ship and use some pitch to get it to turn the way you want it to turn. So the player isn't manually controlling both the roll and the pitch. The aircraft is just responding, move left. Um, and then lastly, there's a target guidance system. And the target guidance system is the ship simply adjusts to where the player wants to face. So you might have, let's say you move, you pull back on the stick or push up on the stick to look up, 
and your ship will simply do whatever adjustments it needs to do to pitch, roll, yaw, to face that direction. And that might just look like that, you know, the cursor is where the target was and the, the ship just moves to that target. So some considerations for the player. You want to be careful of the orientation. Um, how fast can you move around? Uh, and, and also in regards to that, the camera, where is the camera facing? You know, where is the ship? Uh, you also want to be considerate of the intuitiveness. Um, space physics is not intuitive. Uh, so if you are trying to target an audience and it's not really like a hardcore sim, you may not want to use uh, simulation space physics. It's really not, not going to cater to the audience. Um, for rotations, there, there's a lot of additional complexity when working in space. Um, and that really has to do with the player movement or the controls for the player movement and also for the camera movement and the orientation of the camera. Uh, just remember in space you could be upside down from where you were before and there's nothing wrong with that That's just normal for space flight and so if you don't have everything set correctly upside down um, In space could mean you're reversing your controls if you're not watching how you're putting those controls in and the same thing with the camera So if your camera is still looking, you know, if your camera is always looking and it's it's always rotated up and your player is upside down that may not be a very good experience for the player. You kind of want to keep your player, um, the player's head north and uh, their ships, you know, the ship's also facing north the way it needs to be. So there are a couple, there's a few key words to, to use here when talking about rotations and that's roll, pitch, and yaw. And roll is around the Z axis or the forward axis. So as a person standing up, if you wanted to roll, uh, do a complete roll, you would do a cartwheel. Uh, you do a cartwheel left or a cartwheel right, but that's you're facing forward, you roll, that's a cartwheel. Pitch is around the X axis or the horizontal axis um, in Unity. That means that if you wanted to do a full roll around the pitch axis, um, it's, so a pitch, if you wanted to pitch 360 degrees, you would do a front flip or a back flip. And then yaw is around the vertical axis, up and down, y-axis. Yaw means that if you were standing up, you would turn around, do a pirouette, things like that. So to give you an example, this cube, we are, this cube is sitting on the ground um, and we're like right at its side. We're looking right at the side of the cube. Um, so we're facing forward. We're not looking at the top of it. We're looking, you know, right on the side of the cube. And if we were to roll this cube it would do this and this is kind of tumbling on its side like a wheel um, if we wanted to pitch then this is kind of you know tumbling towards us now and if we wanted to yaw then we're gonna rotate it like that flat on the ground and so that's roll pitch and yaw now to, for example, to do a roll, pitch, and yaw, um, I've got the roll and the pitch, uh, some example equations you might use. And the first one is roll. We would say transform.rotate vector3.back. And so what I'm saying is you can go forward or back, but I found back works best if you want it to, you know, left is counterclockwise, right is clockwise. So using vector3.back vector gets you that output and times roll roll was actually an input for the horizontal axis effectively so we're timesing it if there's an input for horizontal axis times that roll and then the speed with which we want it to roll and then times time dot delta time and then there is an additional argument we're passing and that is space dot self so we were rolling it in regards to its own orientation um, or, or in rotation. Basically, space.self says not for the world's x, you know, not for the world's vector back, it's for my own. So we're going to roll it around that z axis. Then transform.rotate vector3 right. So this is the, this is the uh, horizontal axis. I'm sorry, this is the, um, yeah, this is the, the horizontal axis that we're, we're going to be rotating around. 
so times pitch. So this is actually, the pitch is just an input um, for the vertical, so up and down, and we're going to either make our ship start turning down or start turning up. So times our speed, times time dot delta time, and again, using space dot self. So that's a real example. If you put your roller pitch, and your speed can be any float, but your roll is an input for horizontal, your pitch is the input for vertical. And then, you know, just a quick reminder, you want to use space.self, just for my, in space, um, very important. And then um, one other consideration is your pivot point. When you are um, rotating something, the pivot point is the point with which it rolls around at any, at any, um, at any axis. So if you want your ship to rotate more towards the back because maybe you have uh, the controls on the back, then you actually want to like maybe create an empty game object and move your ship forward um, and make that your pivot point instead of making it in the center of your object. Translations. So we'll cover this again. Uh, in a space simulation, movement is based on a combination of forces. So you could be turning right, but you'll keep going in the original direction you were moving before. And um, the translation is not restricted to the forward of the vehicle. So unlike an airplane, if you turn right, you may continue going to what you perceive as your now left because your original direction was, say, north. You turn right and you're now heading east and your motion is actually northeast for a while. Um, and, and then it gets more and more east as you continue to push, you know, continue to push force towards the east. But you actually head northeast, whereas with an aircraft, if it turns east, um, pretty quickly it's only going east. It's no longer going north at all. Um, and then there's also very low drag and friction in space, so it takes a really long time to slow down. So if you are going in a direction and you take off the thrust, the, the perception of your de decrease in speed, you may not even see it. You may not even be aware that you are slowing down. Um, you should continue on the same speed almost as you were before you took the thrusters off, generally speaking. Then there's the pseudo aircraft simulation or the arcade aircraft or even the target system. Um, the translation for uh, an aircraft is going to be restricted to the forward of the vehicle. So the ship is facing forward as long as it's moving forward. It's moving in the direction it's looking. The drag can be variable. Um, so you can have your, your spacecraft slow down really fast or you can make it like space where it's not really slowing down at all so when you take off the thrust it doesn't slow down but uh, low drag would be counterintuitive to an aircraft system so it's up to you how you want to do it if it if it feels okay in your game go ahead but I would say add a little bit more drag if you're using an aircraft system because that's what people are used to they're used to slowing down whenever they take off the thrust um, so the thrust should really help you accelerate but taking off the thrust doesn't necessarily decelerate you. And some final thoughts here. Consider your audience. That's the biggest thing. Real space physics is hard to control. So if you are catering to that kind of audience where they want real space physics, go for it. Um, but just know that um, it, is, it is very difficult to master. Um, there is no down in space, typically. Um, you may make your game where you do have a down or you want to orient things and that'd be great. Um, but if you don't have any down at all and you can be in any direction, just remember that can be very disorienting, uh, and help people. If you are going to do that, um, help people orient themselves by including large static objects in your game or using skyboxes with unique markers so that people can figure out visually where they're at. Um, and then consider your game. Does a simulation fit the style of your game? If you're using something that's really kind of cartoony looking and arcadey looking, um, you might think that there, there, there could be a good use for having simulation physics that match what you would use in space. But generally speaking, if you have like simulation space physics, uh, you want to have like a realistic game um, or, you know, things that, that kind of go against that is like Kerbal Space Program. They're actually using like real physics. Um, so just the style of your game, uh, how you want it to be, 
uh, consider all those things because uh, it all kind of matters. So anyway, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.